Hey guys, how's it going? Mike here. Um, back at it again with another video. Uh, just a quick update, guys. Uh, because the combine's not over yet, and I missed today's um, workout, and I'll have to watch it a little bit later, uh, combine reaction videos are going to pick up on Thursday. Like, the combine reaction and takeaways video is going to be on Thursday. After that is when you're going to see more rankings videos once I've, <coughs> excuse me, once I've had a chance to go through adjust my big, uh, big board accordingly, uh, basically almost redo it, um, well at least redo portions of it, uh, just as far as risers, fallers, stuff like that, uh, but for now, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you're gonna get, uh, some subscriber suggested videos, uh, first being today with the All Sleeper team, um, and again, guys, if you won't have any video ideas, not just related to the draft, but in anything, uh, whether it's NFL uh, opinion video, NBA opinion video, uh, NFL draft, leave that down below, and I do read every comment. Now that I've wasted a minute of your time, let's get into this. So I'm going to go through every position, um, with the exception of the offensive line. Offensive line, I'm literally just doing one sleeper at the position. I'm not doing one at tackle, one at guard, one at center. Uh, one, because I don't think that many people care, and two, it's a really weak position at all, th or it's really weak at all three of those positions, and I do not want uh, to have to be grasping at straws to find a sleeper at, at some of these positions. <clears throat> Number one at uh, quarterback, so let's get this started, uh, is Nathan Peterman out of Pitt. I caught on to him in around November, I was listening to a podcast where someone was really high on him, so I checked out a few of his games. And it was basically coinciding with when he beat uh, Clemson. <clears throat> and he's really been a good riser this year. Um, you know, was like the last guy accepted the combine when it came to the quarterbacks. Uh, you know, had a really good, or not, uh, sorry, to the senior bowl. Uh, had a really good combine. Uh, he's, he's really smooth. And I think once you get outside that top four, top five quarterbacks, there's really not anyone that I would say has any potential to develop into even an emergency starter, except for Peterman. So I think you're probably going to have to overpay him, you know, uh, you know overdraft him a bit. Uh, I think he's a early fourth round value. I think someone's going to maybe get him in, a, in around that mid third round. But I still think once if you miss out on the top four or top five guys, he's really all that's left. Uh, at running back, there are so many guys that can fit the bill for as far as a sleeper. Uh, really, once you get outside of that top four, it doesn't start uh, tapering off really as far as talent until maybe you get to that fifteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth running back. Like there's just it's loaded this year, and which is scary because there were a lot of really good running backs that decided to stay in school too. So it could be even deeper than it already is. Um, but for me. My big sleeper at running back is Marlon Mack out of South Florida. Um, Mack is a home run hitter. Um, what I mean by that is he's always looking to make the big play, but what sets him apart from other running backs that are always looking to make the big play is he has really, really good vision, like uh, among the best in the class. Um, a lot of these, you know, uh, you know swing for the fences type running backs – their big plays or you know, or whatever they're not they're not they're manufactured it's all due to blocking or poor tackling he's just got amazing vision so it's mostly on him for these anyways uh he had a really good combine rose up my rankings a little bit i think that depending on how the running back uh, board follows uh, falls in this draft uh, if like three or four guys go in round one you might have to to take him in round two, maybe early round three, or if people decide to wait on you know on running backs, he could still be there in round four or five, and he's a starting quality back. And uh, at receiver is another guy who had a really good combine and rose up my rankings quite a bit. Uh, he was my twelfth guy going into the combine. And came out of it at my sixth. Uh, that's Chris Godwin out of Penn State. I actually really liked his tape before he even declared. Uh, I watched the last couple of Penn State games, uh, you know, live, and he's really, really solid. I thought, you know, this is a guy that's going to be you know a sleeper on a lot of people's boards. You know, who knows? Maybe you get him in like 
around four, one, five, you know, round four, round five. Then he started rising and rising and rising. And going into the combine, I had him in the top 80. And then he absolutely went out. He ran way faster than anyone expected. He showed uh, really good catching ability, really good route running. Uh, he tripped on a out or on an in route uh, during one of the throwing drills and still made the catch. He tripped. It was overthrown. And he ended up on the way down just diving and making a ridiculous catch for it. Um, he just, he really, he made himself a lot of money uh, this weekend. And I really think that whoever gets him is going to potentially get a number one wide receiver out of him. Tight end. I'm not really sure what classifies as a sleeper in this class because there's really about seven or eight really good tight ends, and then it's just a steep drop off. But if I had to put my, you know, uh, attach my name to one as a sleeper, it's Daryl Daniels out of Washington. No one talks about this kid. Uh, a lot of them don't even think he could, you know, he'd even be drafted. Uh, but he's really raw, he's really athletic. And athleticism's got to pay off at some point for him. And, you know, he he said, you know, at the combine he was going to run the fastest 40, and he didn't. Uh, so maybe he's got a bit of foot and mouth disorder. But other than that, I think he, he has the potential to really develop. Uh, he can't block worth a fuck, so hopefully he goes to a team where someone will be able to teach him that. But I really think that uh, he has the potential to be a solid tight end at the next level. Uh, given his draft his draft stock, and to me, that's exactly what a sleeper should be uh, in a position such as uh, as tight end, where there's just such a steep drop off. Offensive tackle Taylor Moten out of uh, sorry, offensive line in general. Uh, Taylor Moten, the right tackle out of Western Michigan. Uh, some people are going to make a big deal out of the fact that he never played left tackle, but Tyron Smith never played left tackle in college, and he went top ten. Uh, I'm not saying he's Tyron Smith. I'm just saying that he's a really solid, underrated offensive tackle. Not going to go in the top five as far as uh, you know, his draft position in the off, you know, in the group. But I think if he's the sixth or seventh guy off the board, uh, someone has the potential to maybe even groom him into a starting caliber left tackle. I think he's a day one starter at right tackle with the potential to switch over after a couple of years. Edge rusher, we're going back to the University of Washington, Joe Mathis. Uh, had a really good start to the season. Uh, got hurt. I believe he tore his ACL. Uh, kind of like that one-year wonder type guy. Wish he would have been able to, to finish the season. Was off to a really strong start. I've got a day three grade on him, and I think once he gets healthy, um, someone's got a diamond in the rough, because I think he's probably going to go in round four, round five, maybe even round six, and whoever gets him gets a gem. Linebacker, uh, sorry, defensive defensive tackle. Sorry, my bad. Uh, defensive tackle. I uh, wanted to put Jaleel Johnson in there, uh, but he moved up my board, and he's now in the top five, so I can't really put him in a sleeper category. Uh, so let's stay at the University of Washington. Let's go with Elijah Qualls, the nose tackle. Uh, really, really solid player. Um, you know... Kind of has been hovering around that five to eight range on you know on my tackle rankings the whole year. Uh, strong as hell, uh, has a little bit of problems keeping his weight off at times. I think uh, if he goes to the right team and they know how to use him properly, he may be picked late day three. But he has uh, he's definitely going to be an impact player. Uh, you know. Day one, whether or not he's a starter, you can rotate him in uh, to, to begin. He provides uh, good uh, strength at the point of attack against the run. And I think someone gets you know a, a really quality player out of him without having to pay uh, high draft. Um, uh, without having to pay a high draft pick on him is what I'm trying to say. Linebacker. Uh, no one is talking about this guy, which is a shame because at the beginning of the year he was being talked about as kind of a fringe first rounder. Jalen Reeves may have been out of Tennessee, uh, had a really early season ending injury, uh, came out, had a really good combine um, the other day. Just really, really solid. I think he's kind of that new age of linebacker, was kind of, he's kind of that hybrid safety linebacker, uh, six feet, 221, really fast, you know. If you have a, a, a tight end or a running back that you need someone to put on, he's your guy. 
Uh, I compare him a lot to Deion Jones from LSU. And I think that, again, you know, if he hadn't have gotten hurt, we'd be talking about him in round one. He got hurt. You might be able to, able to get him in day three. Corner is a tough one because there's two guys I really want to put down here. Uh, one, ironically, my lower-rated guy is being talked about more than my higher-rated guy. So I'll go with the higher-rated guy, uh, Desmond King, instead of Kevin King. Desmond King from Iowa. No one is talking about this kid anymore. Yeah, his senior tape was not as good as his junior tape, but he's still really good, and I don't agree with the idea that he needs to be put at safety. I think he just needs to be put in the right system. Uh, He's not going to be good as far as flipping his hips. Just put him in the right system. Um, Don't put him in a man-to-man system. If he's doing zone and he's playing a little bit off, that's that's the ideal... uh, you know, system for him to be in, and I think if he's able to go to a team that's able to maximize his strengths, he's going to have a long career in the NFL. And last but not least, safety, and another guy where he's on this list due to injury, not due to uh, perceived performance, and that's Eddie Jackson out of Alabama. He broke his leg, I can't remember in which game he broke his leg against, I want to say it was Texas A&M, um, but was looking like he was going to be easy top 50 safety. I've got him probably somewhere in between 75 and 100, which is really good value, and he's a day one starter. So that's going to do it for today, guys. Uh, As always, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend to tell a friend. Again, if you guys have any uh, video suggestions, leave them down below, and I'll talk to you again soon.